This is 3050, week three, lecture one. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, more examples of translational mechanical systems. Translational mechanical systems. Recall that last lecture we did a book example, not a skill assessment exercise. So we covered, like, first of all, what are the different um, translational mechanical system components. Uh, we looked at how to draw free body diagrams and use the principle of superposition to get the required transfer function. The last problem, actually, now I remember, I just wrote it in matrix form, okay? So I showed you that the matrix is a symmetric matrix because of the physics behind the problem. I really didn't find the transfer function. Actually, I just realized it's an example in the book. So go through the steps of how we found the transfer function. Today, what we will do is we'll complete this skill assessment exercise, right? Uh, this is on page 69. Okay. So in this case, we'll start, I mean, we'll go through the full example and find the transfer function. So the goal is to find this transfer function x2, that is this displacement over this input force, okay? It's pretty much, it's very similar to the last problem, right? Except we just have to be careful of these friction coefficients, so you shouldn't miss them. So let's start solving this. So solution, so how do you do this? What is the big, big what is the big idea behind this? Let's break it down into multiple pieces. So look at, let's look at uh, forces on M1. So draw the free body diagrams using superposition. M1 due to the motion on of M1 alone. Forces on M1 due to the motion M2 alone. And again, like I said last lecture, your book talks about how you can just look at this and say, okay, it's x1 times some of the impedances connected to x1, et cetera. You can do that. But I don't follow, I don't do that because yeah, just taking that extra step of drawing the free body diagram not only clarifies the physics, it also, like as long as you don't sleep while you're doing this, it's you can easily avoid sign errors, okay? You're welcome if you can eyeball it, just look at what are all the impedances connected to X1 in the S domain. But I don't recommend you do that. Just so, because this method, you can not only avoid mistakes, you understand the physics of the problem. But what I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna write it in terms of the impedances. So instead of writing like uh, M1 times X1 double dot, right? As the force due to the mass, I'm just gonna write M1 S, squ S squared M1 X1, right? So, well, let me write it out and you'll see what I mean. So here is little m1, right? Oh, another thing. I don't plug in the numbers immediately. I set up the equation symbolically and then I plug in the numbers. Not only me, any hopefully qualified uh, engineer or scientist, that's what they do. They set up symbolically. So with symbols, you can kind of figure out if you made a mistake in the signs or not. If you right away plug in these numbers, it's, it's a bad idea, right? Don't do that. Just write it symbolically, get the equations, then plug in the numbers. Right? So that's what I'll always do. So this is our little x1, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write this x1 of s. I'm just going to go directly into the x domain, s domain. All right. So let's say I hold m2. m2 is this guy, right? It's this... Um, whatever object this is, okay, into, into which this mass is placed. So this is held still, okay, this guy. You see that? That's M2, okay? And then I push M1 to the right. Question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last example is done. This is actually, you have the book with you. This is skill assessment 28 on page 69. I think it's page 69. Dude, come on, open up. Yeah, it's page 69. Okay? 
So let's look at the last problem Scott is over. Like in the sense we have to basically just get the transfer function that's done in the book. I'll actually find the transfer function for this one all the way to the end, right? Because the algebra is important. All right. So what are the first guy is f of s acting to the right. Yes, it's pushing the mass to the right. So what are the other forces acting on this? So this is held still. I'm pushing it to the right. I don't know, let's start with this mass, for example. So what does the mass do as I push it to the right? Opposes this force. So it's going to be s squared m1 x of s. Is that clear? m1 x, d oh shoot, I just messed this up. It's x1, right? There's no x of s, there's x1, sorry. s squared m1 x1 of the. So it's s squared m1 x1 of s. All right, I'll, I'll eventually stop writing the of s, okay? So that's m1 x1 double dot, is that clear? All right, let's keep going. So then the, 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 there is this friction here, there's this friction here, there's this guy here. Is that clear? There are three of them, you see that? On M1, as I push it to the right, all three oppose its motion. Yes, there is one, there is two, there is three. Well, well the fourth one doesn't count because for M1, right, the fourth one is the friction acting between this guy and the surface. Is that clear? It's not acting on M1. So, well, let's write that out. So, it's going to be S times FV1 plus FV2 plus FV3 times X1 of S. Is that clear? And then finally, there is one more, which is the spring, right? The spring opposes its compression, if you will. So that's this way, and it's going to be k x1 of s, okay? And that's it. I'm not going to write the of s from now. Is that clear? Hopefully, I didn't leave out any forces. If I did, let me know. Right. Now, forces on m1 due to the motion of m2 alone. So here is m2. Oops, what am I writing? Here is m1. Here is x1, okay? So now I'm going to hold m1 still. I'm going to pull x1 to the right, okay? Why to the right? Because that's the direction of positive displacement, right? So as I pull this guy, this spring and damper oppose this motion on m2, but on m1 is an equal and opposite force which pulls m1 to the right, okay? I mean, that's what happens physically, right? I pull this to the right, M1 starts moving, okay? Well, then this guy is going to be to the right. Um, so let's see, it's going to be S FV3 X1, and it's going to be K S to the zero, which is one, K X1, okay? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I messed this up, I messed this up, I messed this up. So what mistake did I do here? So what do I do instead of x1? It's x2, right? Because x, that's why you gotta be careful, right? M2 is moving, yes? So it's actually x2, is that clear? So again, you gotta do a quick sanity check, right? It's x2 that moves, and the displacement on x2 causes these forces to pull on x1 on m1 i'm sorry okay not x1 is that clear so just don't i mean just think as you're writing or then uh, once you write check yeah so yeah this is also wrong so in the sense okay let me do this correctly so the correct way to do this is this way I'll just do this right. What? Oh, here? Yeah, there's no other way to do this. So, 
So here is X2. So John's right. In the sense, your X2 is not on M1, all right? So this is the correct picture to draw. So in other words, this is your mass 2, okay? Right here, this is an entire, like, whatever, bracket, if you will. Okay. And that's moving to the right. Is that clear? That causes these forces on M1. That's it. We're not pushing it. We're, I mean, well, okay, fine. You're pushing it, pulling, pushing, because there are two degrees of freedom here. So in other words, the way the system can move, okay, let's say you put a force on M1, okay? That's, ex that's basically what's happening physically. M1 will move to the right, and the motion on M1, because M1 is coupled to M2 through the spring and dampener, that's going to cause this bracket to move to the right. Is that clear? But, hold on, but when I'm writing the free body diagram, I'm writing it, I'm not decoupling it, but I'm analyzing it by breaking it down using superposition. If you're really good at this, you can directly write the equations of motion based on the physics. But I don't recommend you do that even if you're really good at it because you would most likely make sign errors. Okay. This is like a, this is how like, uh, like ANSYS and all, the, the well, I don't know if ANSYS is mechanical simulation, but mechanical simulation software, this is what they do, right? They break it down. This is like algorithmic. Right? It's like computers do this. No, you don't have to. That's what my point. That is, if you can spot this physics-wise, if I push this to the right, uh, this mass moves to the right, and the motion of this mass causes this mass to move because this is not tied down, all right? That's what this friction actually means, right? Yes, they do. Thank you. So let's look at that. Uh, so before uh, we continue, so Tim, is that clear? In the sense it's easier to break it down. And like Connor said, I screwed this up even further. Right? So that's, this is very tricky. Right? So let me, I don't know how to draw this. In the sense, uh, okay, let me just put it here. So I forgot these two forces. Okay? Because as this as mass M2 moves to the right, this pulls on M1, yes? But you can see there is also these friction coefficients right here. So this also act on M1. So in other words, what happens here is S times FV1 plus FV2 plus FV3 times X2. Okay, so it's kind of hard to write. Okay, let me do this. Let me erase this. Uh, let me move this. Try this. Okay. X2. There you go. All right. So did I miss any other forces? So this is the only spring that I can guarantee. There is this guy right here. There is this fellow and this fellow. Okay, three of them. FV4 definitely doesn't act because it's between M2 and the surface. Yes? So anything else I missed? All right. So let's write the equations of motion. So at x1, what we get is, let's say, F of S is on the right-hand side. That's our input force. So let's be careful of the signs. So here you have S squared M1 plus S times FV1 plus FV2 plus FV3 plus K times X1. Okay? So that's these guys. I factor out an X1. They all just add S squared M1 S times the dampening coefficients plus the spring constant. Yes? It's on the left-hand side of the equation. So when you move this to the right-hand side, or if you move F to the left hand side, they're on the same side, they'll have opposite signs. You see that? F and these expressions will have opposite signs if they're on the same side of the equation. And that's correct according to this picture. Yes? And then, this has to be a negative because these are the same direction of F. So if I move this to the side of these... Um, 
impedances, if you will, you get, let's see, S times, oh man, FV1 plus FV2 plus FV3 plus K, okay, times X2 equals F. Okay, I'll just write F because I don't have of S. Okay? So I can be careful of the signs. So that's at X1. Any questions on this? Those. Yeah, mine probably crashed. Let's save it. So, as my laptop is, uh, well, it recovered. So let's look at, so start writing. I'll take like a couple of minutes break because I need some water. Uh, so now, what I want you to do is I want you to write the same equations of motion, but for X2, okay? So I'll give you like five minutes. So again, what are the forces acting on X2 due to the motion of X2, right? There is, what is there going to, there's going to be the mass opposing the motion of X2 to the right. There is the mass. There is the spring. Yes. There is this dampener. Okay. And these coefficients of friction as well. Yes. Because as I move this to the right, the mass is going to oppose it. The spring is going to oppose it. This guy is going to oppose it. This guy is going to oppose it. And these are going to oppose it. Now, if I, yeah, question? No, we didn't. There's the mass. Okay. Okay? Number one. Number two, as I hold this mass still and I move this fellow to the right, push it to the right, okay? There is again going to be the interface uh, between this mass and that M1 and M2 that's going to oppose, that's going to, sorry push this fellow to the right, it's going to be this guy, this guy, this FV1 and this FV2, okay? So take like five minutes, let me pause the lecture and write it out, so I'll leave this picture up, so it's only 918, so take till like 923, and I'll be back. Continue, All right, let me go back to 100%, so any brave volunteers who want to tell me the motion at X2? So what I'll do is, um, let's look at the expression for X2, and then I'll draw the free body diagram. Okay, just uh, so anybody got the expression for X2? So tell me what it is. Any? Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna try writing it. Okay. All right. So the answer is almost right. Any corrections? Yes? Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, it's not, like in the sense, if I push move X2 to the... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, so that's a good question. Uh, but you're not moving it in the vertical direction. It's only horizontal. Yeah, we're ignoring. It's only one. It's two degrees of freedom in one, in the x-axis direction. How's that? 
Yeah. That's right. So the function of friction is only in the x direction. That's why we are multiplying it by x1. Yeah. But uh, so I think the negative sign, this is what you meant, yes? It's outside. Uh, but any corrections, if any, here? So this is right? OK, so let's look at this fellow, right? So this is the forces. Let me just write it down. Uh, let me do this. The forces on M2 due to the motion of M2 alone. So there is a correction here, OK? It's in this expression. And then what the, okay. Oh boy, I have to go to the next page. Um, so let me see. Which one? Yes. So the FV4 should not be there, okay? And you can see that, but let me just write it out. Right. So just do this. So, so hard to draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, no, no. Okay, so that's a good question. So let's see. Let me. Oh, hold on. So here, this will probably answer it. So it goes back to what Tim said. There are two ways to look at this, right? One way is, yes, you can look at it like Tim's way or Scott's way. That is, what happens as I apply a force to the system, right? So both M1 and M2 move. Yes, correct. But by applying superposition, we are able to, that is, when we apply superposition, we are holding M1 still. So that's what this means. Forces on M2 due to the motion of M2 alone. So we're holding this so it, so it is prevented from moving. So when we write this expression, M1 is not moving. So the mass doesn't come in. Okay? But when you look at the overall equation, yes, it does come in. Yes, exactly. If you're really good at this, you can, you can try this, Scott. You can just look at this. All right. As I push this to the right, what is the equation of motion that happens? So you can just write it out without doing superposition. That's the answer to your question. Yes, it does get related. Yes, it does affect it. But that's in the overall system dynamics. Yeah. No. We are not, because mass 1 doesn't affect friction 4. Friction FV4 is between mass 2 and the surface. However, in the overall system dynamics, all of these come into play. No, in that case, no. In terms of weight, all right, the mass is only opposing it in, as an inertia when you're moving it in one direction. This system is not moving in the vertical direction. Well, the normal force and gravity cancel each other because it's not moving in the vertical direction. However, in the dynamics of the system, all of these come into play. And that's easy to see when you, I don't want to say decouple, because you're not really decoupling the system. right? You're using superposition and looking at the effects one at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Ma modeling it, the mass doesn't come into the friction. But if you're asking, does, it, does the mass matter with the normal force, it doesn't in this case because you're not moving in the vertical direction. Does that answer your question? And for Scott's point, yes, the mass M1 does affect M2. And it's apparent from these equations. But the way we get these equations, we talk about the action of one degree of freedom at a time. So, yeah. 
Yeah, the friction is another damper. Yes, like Chris says. Yeah, we're at a higher level of... of well, maybe. You might have to come up with a more accurate model of friction. And it, that's why this, this works pretty well, that in the sense when you get into the DC motor model, you will see our approximations are very close to how the DC motor works physically. If it's not, we won't be using these. Yeah. So these are good questions. And I'm, I welcome you to try, I mean, I can't do this, like in the sense I'll make sign errors, if I try to look at it, everything at a time. Even when I look at circuits, this is basically the equivalent of circuits. Right? When you look at a single loop or single node, when you write node pair equations, yes? When you do nodal analysis or mesh analysis, that's exactly what you're doing. And even with circuits, I can't really spot it. Right? I have to do it one at a time. That is, I have to either write one mesh equation at a time or one node equation at a time. Sorry. So let's. So the mass is opposing this. So this is S squared M2 X2. And then I thought I saw a dampener here. I mean, a spring here. Yes. KX2. And then there is four of these guys. So the mass. If you want, this is being held still. Okay? So superposition, that's what it is. And there are four of them, right? So this is S, whoops, not S squared. S times sigma K going, ah. Well, this is wrong because it's not on M1. Let me try to put it on here. Okay. Because M2 is moving. S times sum summation K going from 1 to 4 F sub V sub 4 X2. Yes? So everybody understand the sigma notation, right? I can zoom in for 200%. Okay. So you understand the sigma notation, yes? So it's FV, and I screwed this up. This is not FV4. This is FVK. Okay. So FE1, FEV1, FEV2, FEV3, FEV4, some of that, times an S, okay, times X2, and there's the mass itself, and there is the spring. I think that's all it is, right? Anything else? I missed out. And this fellow is this guy. Yes? So now, the forces on M2 due to motion of M1 alone. So M1 is being pushed to the right. Okay. So now X1 is of interest. So M2 is being held still. So on M2, as I push this to the right, there is a spring here, there's a dampener here, there are also these frictions. Yes. They oppose M1. But on M2, the direction is this way. Yes? So let's see, I think there's a spring, KX1, and then there is S times FV1 plus FV2 um, plus, what is it? FV3. There is 1, 2, and 3. The 4 doesn't count. Okay. FV3, X1, yes? And if you look at this, notice the direction, okay? Again, this is a force on M2, yes? The input force doesn't act on M2. It acts only on M1. Now, if you look at these two, these arrows here, these two arrows, compared to these three arrows, they're in the opposite direction. So, of course, if you write it on the same side of the equation, if there is a plus, there is a negative sign, and there is no FE4. Is that clear? So going back to Scott's point, these two are my system dynamics. So it's both equations. Okay. All right. We're not done. We have set up the system. Okay. So now what we got to do, two things. One, we have to plug in the numbers. Yes. And the good news is the magnitude is all one. This is the kind of questions I'll give you on the exam. The magnitude will be one. Right. Because once you get this, it's easy. Easy. Right. Just plug it in. And you practice so you don't avoid careless mistakes, right? Even here, practice enough so you don't make this mistake. And this is where, like, 
95% of the exam points or the question points are. It's this one. Right? Once you set up these equations with the correct sign, right, correct displacements, correct forces, you're done. So let's finish this. So let's plug everything in. So this is 1. This is 2. So 1 implies just plugging in all the numbers. So let's see. Excuse me. I get S squared plus 3S plus 1X1. Minus. The magnitude is all 1. 3S plus 1X2 equals F. Okay? Done. 2 implies it's going to be minus 3s plus 1 x1. Let's just check. All right. So 1, 2, 3s plus 1 negative sign x1. Got to be symmetric all right, because of the system. And you will see systems where this is not true. All right. It's like in electric circuits, you have like a dependent source or you have like a decoupling. It's like that. Right? It's Plus, this is going to be S squared. I bet there are four of these guys. Plus 1, X2 equals 0. Let's just check. S squared, this magnitude is 1. Four of these guys, S plus 1 times X2 equals 0. Okay, there it is. Okay? So in matrix form, let me just do this in matrix form in the sense it works out very elegantly in matrix form. And I'll try to do the algebra, and I screwed this up. Put a bracket there. That's a common mistake which students make. Just be mindful, all right? It's negative of 3s plus 1. It's not negative 3s plus 1, Because right? when I wrote it, I wrote it like that. And that's incorrect. Okay, let me try this. x1, x2 is f0, OK? So now what you have to do? is to find, so what do we want? We want G is, oops, G is X2 over F. Okay, that's what we want. So we want G of S is X2 of S over F of S. Okay, we can do algebra, right? I'll do that shortly, but you can also do this on your calculators. Does everybody have their calculators with them? The TI-89 or whatever? So what I have, is a little emulator that I downloaded. Okay. You might have done this in your EE100. So there, it's on. Okay. So let me just plug it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this. Okay. So let's call this three. Three implies. I can invert this matrix. Yes, it's a square matrix. Okay? And I'm going to do that using my calculator. That's because it's quick. And I can, number one. Number two, I can show you how to do it. And there goes my um, journal editor. It just crashed. So let me uh, close this. Well, I don't think it crashed, but let me save. All right. Yeah, it didn't crash. Okay, x1, x2 of s is going to be s squared plus 3s plus 1, negative 3s plus 1, negative of 3s plus 1, s squared plus 4s plus 1, the whole inverse, okay, times f of s 0. Is that clear? If I multiply by the inverse on both sides, the inverse times the matrix itself is the identity matrix, yes? Everybody have done like basic linear algebra in the sense you understand this. Yes? Don't worry about how to take this inverse. That will do on the calculator. And I'll do this using algebra as well. But I want to show you that this is very quick on your calculator. Your TI-89 can understand symbolic stuff. So let me try doing that. So first, is this clear? Notice the inverse. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type this in my calculator. I don't have MATLAB. I can show you how to do this in MATLAB. It's very similar. Just type it and ask it to find the inverse. So you just type this in. So let me do that. And it's going to be a pain for me. Uh, let me see. Where is S? So alpha S squared. You see that? Plus three times alpha S. 
So open square bracket, okay? Just like it is here. Open this bracket plus one, okay? So that's the first row, first column entry. To go to, so you enter row wise, okay? To get to the first row, second column, you can use a space or a comma. So I'm gonna use a comma, negative sign, open parentheses, three times alpha S, oops, alpha S, what happened? Oh, no way, alpha S plus one, close parentheses, Hopefully you can see that in the back, all right? Now, how do you go to the how do you go to the next row? Semicolon is what you use, okay? Where is my semicolon? I think that's it. No. Does anybody see the semicolon here? Huh? Where? Second to the nine. Oh, here, this one. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. So that's the next row, all right? The next row is this. So negative of three times alpha s. So I don't know how to use my keyboard with this. So anyway, it's not that bad. Comma. So let's see. Alpha s squared plus four times. I don't think you have to specify the multiply symbol. I think your 89 is smart enough if you just write 4s to understand that it's four times s. But I specify it anyway. And what the hell? Don't tell me you crashed. Okay, there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Second, so close bracket to the power negative one. That's it. Okay. You press enter, and hopefully it doesn't crash. And there it is. Okay. There is the inverse. Okay. And unfortunately, <laughs> I need <laughs> this entry, okay? Uh, no, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> so it <laughs> I can't. Oh, they're like this? Up. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, there you go. All right. So here's my matrix, the inverted matrix, okay? So let me see if this works. Can I copy this? No, I'm trying too much. All right, so, so let me just write this out. Therefore, the, it has been inverted. Were everybody, were all of you able to do it on your calculator? Yes, do, do this. So I don't, I'm running out of time. So next lecture, we'll solve this algebraically, okay? On the exam, I'll allow you to use a calculator because of this, because it's involved. Or you can do this algebraically. I'll only ask you to do it two by two. Okay, if I ask you, I can ask you a four degree of freedom system, but in that case, I'll only ask you to get this. Because this should be very quick. But if I ask you to actually solve, which I most likely won't ask you, it'll only be a two by two. And you can do this algebraically like we'll do tomorrow. Right? It's not hard. I just wanted to quickly do this because I knew I was not going to have time to do this algebraically. It does take time. So we're not done, don't leave yet. So <laughs> we still have time. So let's just um, write this out. Can somebody just read off from that calculator? It's much easier than trying to, than me going back and forth. So what's the first row, first column? What's this entry? Hello? Anybody did it? Yeah. Sorry? S squared plus 4S plus 1. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. This is the denominator, right? What about this guy? 3S. Same thing, right? Uh, it's interesting. What do you notice about the denominator? They're all the same, okay? That's a very deep result, that the denominators have to be the same. And we unfortunately don't have time to discuss this. There is some entry here, some entry here. I kind of don't care about those in entries or do I? Let's see. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Actually, I do care about those entries. So, what's this entry? Second row, first column. Mm -hmm. Over the same thing, yes? Of course it has to be, because your initial matrix was a symmetric matrix, yes? So the inverse of a symmetric matrix is going to be a symmetric matrix. It's all interesting stuff, right? And I definitely don't care about this. Why? Well, let's multiply this out. You get x1 of s, x2 of s, matrix multiplication. Again, you don't have to do this with matrix way. Next lecture, we'll do it algebraically, right? So how do you multiply matrices? This row times this column, yes? It's a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 1. So you get a 2 by 1, yes, as the product. Yeah. So we have s squared plus 4s plus 1 over s times s cubed plus 7s squared plus 5s plus 1 times f of s, okay? But that's not what he's asking for. The author is asking us for x2 over f, yes? x2 over f. So what interests us is the second entry. So what is that? It's going to be 3s plus 1 over the same thing. The denominator, that is. Times f of s, yes? This one is just whatever it is times 0. Okay, we don't care. So it's basically this times this plus 0 times this. 0 times that is 0, so you just get this. Therefore, x2 of s over f of s, which is what we want, is 3s plus 1 over s times s cubed plus 7s squared plus 5s plus 1. Okay, let me try to write the 5 there. And so in the book, what he has, let's check. And that's what I believe they have. And you can look at it online. Okay, you should be able to access it. Look at the way they solve it, and it might be a little different. I, I doubt it. Huh? It doesn't work? Okay, I can try it right now. So let me try it. We have two minutes. Um, 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 um. So that's it. It looks like we got the right answer. Okay? So it's good. All right? So tomorrow, what I'll do is I'll do this algebraically. You don't have to do this matrix way, but matrix way is very quick. Right? Oh, on your homeworks, you will have three by three systems. So for that, you want to do it in the matrix way or MATLAB. Don't do it by hand. You'll never, it's very difficult. It's algebra, right? It takes a long time. So if you don't know matrices, stop by my office. We'll talk about it. So let me address uh, Chris's issue of not being able to access the website. Let's see if I can quickly do it. And actually, uh, we are done. So if you want to leave, you can take off, right? So yeah, see you next time.